It is said that something inside us lives on from those who love us, even when they are gone. Actually, it's mostly bacteria that live inside us. In fact, they make up over 90% of the cells in our bodies. But we can also have other human cells living inside us, inside many of us here, not because we're all pregnant, but because all of our mothers were. <laughs> yes. See, normally the cells in our body are locked in place, but sometimes one will detach and can be, say, swept away by the blood or even actively extend protein grappling hooks and haul itself around the body. And doing this, with the nutrient exchange between mother and fetus, they can swap bodies and then settle down. Now, having a few cells from someone else in your body is called microchimerism. Levels of microchimerism typically fall after birth, but in over half of both mothers and children, some cell lines will live on. And these cells can live anywhere, from integrated into your lungs to literally mending scars on your heart. In fact, autopsies on women found that over 60% of them have male DNA in their brains. But it's not just mum involved. We also find, during late pregnancy, a sudden spike in grandma's DNA found in the mother. These cells she has kept from her mother seem to reduce the chance of a potentially fatal pregnancy complication called preeclampsia. And of course, these cells are floating around, so microchimerism in the child doesn't just have to come from mum. It can come from grandma, or a twin, or elder brother, too, who have left cells behind. And there's another layer of this weirdness within us. <laughs> See, some organelles inside our cells were once themselves free. They were bacteria that now live and belong here. This is how we obtained mitochondria, the organelles that make ATP that give to us our energy, so needed for life, but also help cells to die if they're infected or defective. They'll try their best to bin it. It's a process called apoptosis that goes on millions of times per minute, and we need this death to grow. We see it in the embryo. So, Cell death carves our organs into shape. It lets our fingers separate, and half our neurons we consume before we've even left the womb. Without this neuronal pruning, our brain would go ballooning, couldn't make enough connections between all the different sections. So this keeps happening as we learn throughout life. And one last thing I have to mention is that like microchimerism, this source of energy is directly inherited from grandma to ma to me. So although grandma is gone, inside us, parts live on. And unlike Phil, he puts his jumper back on again afterwards as well. So, time for a lamble to the slaughter of our judges. Fascinating. Um, oh, there was some rapping in there. I wasn't expecting that. And also, clothes coming off, always good. <laughs> but um, I wanted to ask, um, with uh, these cells, which are permeated from other people, um, uh, for instance, um, I have my, um, since my daughter's been born, I've had really bad um, allergies. So uh, are these uh, cells attacked by the immune system? This is a really interesting question. So it, it used to be very much believed that this would only happen to you if there was something wrong with your immune system. But now we see it definitely happens in people with perfectly normal uh, systems. And there's a lot of study going into whether or not it's correlated with different diseases. Autoimmune diseases particularly seem to be correlated with it. It's not clear that it causes it or it's just a consequence of it, but there's some association. On the other hand, having the male DNA in your brain is negatively correlated with getting Alzheimer's and also certain types of cancer. So there's loads of slightly, I didn't quote all these things because the studies technically are a little small and you never know if they're causing or just saying that there's something weird with your immune system, but it seems to be the case that, yes, there is association between a whole range of different symptoms and uh, having these cells inside us. That's a really intriguing subject that you've chosen. Now, preeclampsia is a disease that, if you, that can go if you marry another man, or even sleep with another man and have a baby <laughs> by him. So you'll see people who do not have preeclampsia uh, then in any of their pregnancies by one uh, man, then marry another man, have his children, and then develop preeclampsia. And there are some men whose partners all get preeclampsia. So grandma isn't that effective at stopping the rampage mm. of... 
Yeah, it's only in about 30% uh, of, of women that this proliferation of grandma cells actually occurs, so I guess it's, it's, you're going to have to temper things by that proportion uh, of, of your results. Gonna, I love the human PowerPoint. Very good. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. But now, you talked about dividing fingers, and yes. I was very interested you didn't really talk into the genetics of it, which is one of the key drivers. So you get Hox D1213 playing silly yep. buggers with your fingers. So why did you not go down that route? to? Because it's a similar sort of story to um, what you were plotting. So I was... This poem is obviously, it's a poem about the cells inside us, but it's also a poem about my grandma. And whilst my grandma may well have had all sorts of Hox genes inside her, and I'm sure that she did, given that she appears biologically normal and doesn't have her, heads coming out, her hands coming out of her ears or anything, um, it's not really relevant to the way I related to her. <laughs> Good answer. Okay, one more time, please, for our 90% bacterial bishop, Robin Lovell. <laughs> 